Welcome to the video by DJ Spear C. We have the XB100 Smart Battery Checker slash Servo Tester, Battery Programmer, and a little bit a lot more. I do have a physical review on this guy here uh, with the complete function of it. Today, I just want to be able to show what you can do for servos. Now, I am powering this guy with my smart battery. It's telling me it's at 30%. The main voltage, uh, even the amount of time I was on it, my uh, Fahrenheit 87, and it's telling me information about the battery itself. And if I click it down, it gives me the gas tank, 5,000, it's a LiPo 4 cell. Uh, last time charge rate was 3C and the discharge is 30. And the amount of cycles I used it, it tells you a lot about this, uh, what you're doing with your battery. You can test pretty much any servo out there. I do have a PowerHD here. I have a high-tech and a Futaba. And in this TC5, I have basically a Savox. Now, what we're gonna do is one short press in the screen right now, you see functions, uh, USB charge, servo tester, servo tester, servo test steps, uh, and yeah, you have your cells. Now we're gonna go to our servo tester, uh, 1520, and you do have a 760. The 760 is basically for helis. Uh, if you wanna test your uh, tail servos and things like that, it's the 760 you can use. But for this application here, we're going to use the 1520. Now on the main screen, you'll see here minimum, middle, and then maximum. Here it will tell you the minimum of pulse per second, the maximum of pulse per second. Uh, and here it tells you the milliamp that uh, the servo takes. This is one thing I do like, uh, that if you want to find out if your servo is basically consuming too much uh, and giving you brownouts, that's a good indicator. The other thing too that I like about having this number here, you'll be uh, physically testing your servo and if you see it's drawing crazy, crazy milliamp, could indicate that your servo is going. Uh, or you might have a very hungry servo. Now, the Savox servos are great servos, but they are power hungry. You'll find out in a second or two here what I mean. Now, what we're going to do, making sure you'll be able to see the screen, uh, is I'm going to press on it once. You see the wheels will turn. We're going to our minimum. It's telling us it's at, at 1020 pulse per second, and our servo is almost consuming 2100 milliamp. Press on it, and again, goes back to center. Servo is not consuming. Once in a while, you'll see it move. If I do move the wheel, there we go. Stop chattering, and it's not consuming. You gotta remember, a digital servo is always trying to find a zero position. That's why sometimes you'll hear a little bit chatter. Now, if I hit again, right? Now we're gonna go to the maximum. But again, you see it's almost consuming 2100 milliamp. It's at 2020 pulse per second. Bring it back to zero. The other option that I do like about this is with the arrows, you can physically move the servo. Now I'll bring it down. And if you look where my thumb is, you're physically seeing the wheel it's turning. One of the reasons I do love that is if you're doing a setup in your vehicle or your buggy or your on-road vehicle, and you're basically doing the sweep that I'll show you in a second here, and you hear the servo throwing out too much. It's overdriving 
uh, on the right and uh, under driving or vice versa. You can physically find out where the servo is not overdriving anymore. And you would say, okay, at 1394 pulse per second, it's not overdriving. Now that's where I need to set up my links to prevent it from going further. Now, there is some remotes out there will let you do that. Mine does. Uh, if I put this guy to back to zero here and I go one side again, I don't know if you can hear it. There's a lot of chatter. Basically, it is overdriving the servo a bit. Uh, in my remote, I was able to dial it back down to prevent that. Now the driver here, it is going full, full bore, full, uh, should I say, overdriving it. But for the moment, it's fine. And if you touch it, it's cold to the touch. Now, if you press twice on the main button here, it's going to sweep itself. It's going to go to minimum to maximum. Uh, it's just doing a sweep. That way you can do some testing uh, to see if there's any binding or uh, something. And you see um, what's the consume, consumption of the physical servo. Now to stop that, basically you just press on your button once, it will go back to zero. And zero consumption. Now, if I take my hand here and put a little bit of pressure on the physical wheel itself, you'll see the servo starts consuming. Again, like I was saying, a digital servo always tries to put itself at zero position. And now I'm doing this here. I'm make it, making it work. Now I'm just going to stop again making chattering noise. Um, now you have it back to zero. Like again, you can physically play with it up and down to find exactly where you're not overdriving the servo itself. And if you do a long press, you're going to back out of the physical testing. And then you have, like I was saying, 720 is for helis, uh, for tail servos and the, heli, the head of the heli itself. If you use it on your basically on road or buggy or even the crawler wise, you'll see the servo will radically not function correctly. Uh, it sounds weird. It's just, it's not made for it. And I'll show you even what it does. Uh, and then the servo test steps, uh, two pulse per second. You can play with that. It gives you other options. But I would leave it at stock. Mine came at two. Again, I would not play with that. Now, if I unplug it from the vehicle, move the vehicle away. And let's take the Futaba here. Now, plugging on the side of it, don't worry. If you do plug it upside down, you're not going to damage anything. And let's go to the 720. And if you see it here, it's not even turning the servo at all because the servo is not made to have this kind of pulse per second. It's not even doing anything. Now, if we go back, our 720, whoop, now you'll see. Now my servo is working because this servo is not made for 720. Okay. I'll exit. We'll go back to the 720. It's freaking out. I'm not sure if you hear it. Now I decide to move a bit, but it doesn't like it at all. 
It's really doesn't like it. <laughs> Close that. I don't want to burn it out. It's still a good servo. And the other, two, the other thing too with this uh, physical tester here is that if you leave it alone by itself, it does have a screensaver, should activate itself uh, briefly here. But uh, if you guys have any questions or comment, post them below. I'll be gladly to answer you. Uh, and if you like this uh, video, hit the thumbs up. It does help a lot. And if you're not subscribed, I would say please subscribe. I do appreciate it, and thank you for watching.